Jay Henderson would document a tech review and how to certify the job test a fire doors. They roll into the old fire arm from State of China, which was all several years ago. One of the key things with any fire door uh, drop test is it's critical to have the installation manual as well as the drop test information. In order to do an inspection, you need to understand the manufacturer requirements on that. And as you can see, they have a very thick and detailed installation guide, and then they have a lot of drop test information as well that shows how to drop test it, and most importantly, how to reset it. If you don't reset it properly, um, it's not going to be ready to go if there is a uh, portion event of the fire. So the process here, uh, step one is to do an inspection on the door um, and everything involved with it, including the feasible links. Uh, step two is to do an operation check with that. That combines in with the inspection. They do overlap. And then step three is the actual drop test itself. And that's done twice, like I said, once to make sure it works right. The second time, you're double checking your setup to make sure you're resetting that door properly with proper tension um, on that door. So I would go to the door, I would, I would check for any visual damage is one thing I would look for as, a, as an installer, as a certified inspector. Um, make sure the tracks are all healthy, we can see there's no damage here. Maybe a few little scuffs or marks, that's not a problem. We're looking for anything that would impede operation of the door. We have nothing on the tracks, that looks really good. Um, we've identified that the door was installed properly. If you notice here, there's slotted holes. It's a little tough to see, but we do have a slotted hole there. Um, this door is an upward biased door. So as the door heats up uh, in the event of a fire, uh, the door will actually rise up. So it's critical that all of these bolts in the side guide are at the top of the hole. Uh, there's upward doors, as this one is. There's also downward biased doors. Um, a lot of installers, unfortunately, about 90% of the doors we find are installed properly, and a lot of it is these major places. That's a common error we see in the field. It is critical it's done right, and that's where you do need the owner's manual, as I mentioned, to ensure that you've done that properly. Um, moving on from the anchors, um, there's a lot of details I'm not covering in the video, folks, just because it, it gets more involved. I'm kind of giving you the basic things that, that we could find on, on a failed inspection. Um, moving over to the governor itself and the fusible link, notice this one has cable. That's perfectly acceptable. Stash cheat is another method. Um, the governor's up, the cable's font. We can see a fusible link right there. There's also one up at the top by the conduit. Um, that conduit is actually a chase through the wall. There is a specification and requirement on that as well, and that's all acceptable here for manufacturer's guidelines once again. Um, if you notice a fusible link up there, um, it has not been painted. It's not covered with grease or dust, so it's good to go. Um, we're gonna walk over to the other side of the opening now to look at the through wall release, um, which once again is more of the same. We've got a cable up there. We've got a fusible link there that's attached. Um, the cable's not, the fusible link's not in what we call the brick floor, which is adjacent to the wall and uh, the ceiling. So that looks good on this side, passing our visual as well. Once again, fusible link is not painted, not, uh, not dust covered. We move back to this side of the opening. Um, the next thing I need to do is finish my inspection, the visual. This particular door does not have a chain hoist. This is a reach and grab, so we've got a uh, this is not the drop test yet, I'm just going to do my visual. One thing I'm going to look at that's absolutely critical is to make sure we've got this identified as a fire door. This is the actual UL label. It's going to tell you your hour rating on it. It's going to give you some numbers, some manufacture, all the critical information there we would need to service this door properly. Uh, this door has some other markings on it as well, but that's the critical one right there. Um, I'm going to operate this door, make sure it balances first of all, which it does. Rest nicely on the floor. Uh, the floor and floor just rest nicely after the drop test, which we're going to do shortly. My next inspection is to make sure I have no holes in my slats. Um, rolling steel fire doors are made up of individual slats, approximately two and a half to three inches tall. Um, if you have a hole in any of these, uh, it's going to fit because we're all fireproof. Um, any dents would be okay, provided they don't prevent the door from operating and moving properly. Uh, on the end here, we have end locks. Uh, I know they're not binding, I didn't have any issues with the door. I want to check on my ribbons, bolts, screws, anything that's holding that together. They all look good, um, and they look good over there as well. Uh, but once again, the technicians are doing a much more thorough inspection. I'm just giving a brief uh, overview of the video purposes. Um, another thing I want to point out, this one's really clean and easy. We've got a, a nice hood up here, turn to our plug. Uh, no dents in that. Uh, if they work dents, that's okay. Uh, however, if there's a serious dent in there that can cause, once again, the door not to travel like you would do that to fail. 
On any rolls, however, in that hood, that would be an automatic fail because it put a lot of fire to come through. So this door seems balanced pretty well. Uh, there's the indication I have here. My technicians have checked to show that this passes the inspection. So the next step we're going to cover is going to be our drop test portion of the fire door certification and drop test or NFPA standards. We have a technician or speed roller on our ladder ready to drop the physical link out in a minute or two here. One thing that's going to happen when he releases that cable, which simulates the physical link melting, you're going to see that cable up top going slack. The governor is on the far side of the door out of view. On our near side of the door, on the right side of this door, is our drop off arm, and that's going to drop out, allowing spring tension release on the door and the door coming down. A couple things that are critical with the drop test is the door must come down. There is a standard rate on all fire doors, uh, regardless of the manufacturer, uh, model, or type, or brand. Uh, that's 6 inches to 24 inches per second, so that's the range. Um, we do have a technician that is on a camera view that is uh, clocking that right now to make sure we're within that time range. Uh, also, when the door does come down, we have to make sure it goes all the way to the floor. If we have a gap on the floor, that's a fail. We want to make sure it comes down to the floor and rests on the floor. One other thing regarding the speed of the door, you're going to notice that it actually accelerates on the way down. Uh, on a larger door, it's more noticeable. But that is very normal and very common on doors because of the spring tension. One other thing to point out before we actually drop the door, we do have some phones up. We've got a spotter on the technician on the other side. We just want to make sure safety first, make sure we don't have any accidents and somebody coming with the door. Uh, the other thing, too, is we always have a witness on this. In this particular case, our client was unable to make it today, so we're going to send a video as proof of it. So he has that as well. So go ahead and uh, go ahead and release that link and watch this door come down. It's going to take a minute to get that release. All clear. All clear. Clear. Drop it. And that dropped perfectly as we did tonight. Like I said, that cable's going to come slack. The drop arm is going to release out. The door's going to come all the way down. It was between our 6 and 24 inches per second. It did get off the floor and came back up and down a little bit. That's perfectly normal. The end result is we have a tight seal on the bottom. So now the next step is we're going to reset the door and we're going to do one more drop on this. That ensures that our technicians are resetting the door properly so it will function uh, as it should in case of a fire. So we've done drop test one. Now our technician is going to set for drop test number two. Here, just because we have two guys, they're able to lock uh, the door open. He's holding the door open, and, and Joe is just rewinding the spring, is what he's doing there with the winding bars. Uh, and the contact technician, you can clamp the door up with the lights, go through some of their apparatus to do that. Joe's already worked with that, he's, he's well aware of this door, what the requirements are for the number of turns. Uh, that is something you reference the owner's manual for proper reset directions. Uh, and that's where I can't stress enough the owner's manual is just critical with this to, uh, to make sure it's reset properly. And what Joe's done there is he just put a vice grip kind of second set of hands to hold that drop arm in place. He's going to assist me here with the cable. He's releasing a little tension on that turn bottle just to make it easy to hook that back up. And on the other side, Steve is rehooking that back to the eye holes and the ceiling there for it. Joe's just checking to make sure everything was clear and set there because he can't get any twists or anything in that cable or it could cause a problem with it dropping there. Now it's just a matter of tightening that turnbuckle back up to get proper tension on the cable. And we're actually going to move to the other side of the door for our next drop test. Again, Jay Anderson here with Dock and Door Tech with my technician Steve and Joe. And we are looking at a second drop test on the door. We've done the inspection. Uh, everything passed there. We did drop test one. It worked well. Um, notice we've got the area barricaded off and, and we're going to go ahead and do our, our second drop test to make sure we reset it right. Let's see how our guys did. Alrighty, clear on the inside. All clear. Drop test number two, clear. And just like our first drop test, that door came down at the correct rate of speed. Uh, pretty big window there, six inches to 24 inches per second. It did cover that. It landed nice on the floor. Um, it's got a tight seal down there. We're not going to have any fire getting underneath there. And that wraps up our second drop test. They're just going to go and they're going to reset the door using the exact same procedure they used for test number one. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the Dock and Door Tech video of a drop test, certification, inspection, and documentation useful. At Dock and Door Tech, we're always available should any questions arise. Our uh, phone number to reach us is 763-753-0792.